Namaste everyone. My name is Greg Prescott from in5d.com and today I'm going to be talking about proof that our DNA is genetically mutating right now. I got some really interesting information uh, provided to me by Rosie Neal and I think a lot of you will be able to connect and uh, resonate with the material that she's presented. But first I just want to say that you know while people are filing in uh, and uh, we're, we're getting more and more people here. Hello everyone. Yolanda. Hello my friend. Hi everyone that's joining me. Yeah, I spent the evening at Siesta Key. had a wonderful evening um, watching the sunset. Of course I did my walk of gratitude and my love bubble meditation. And uh, I do that every time when I go to Siesta Key. And then I went to Captain Kurtz for some clam chowder and I had my picture taken with Buddha and I posted that on my uh, personal Facebook wall and so you can check that out keep in mind I'm the one on the right just in case you can't tell by the tummy okay <laughs> so everyone's filing in right now I love you all thank you so much for joining me namaste everyone I see Christina Love, Annie Alexander, Josh Hensley, Debbie O'Brien, Amber Jean Lund Simpson, Paul A. So, Michelle Ryan, Stephen Keenan. Wow, there's so many people here. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me. I also have a bunch of questions, too, that I couldn't get to the last time, so hopefully I'll get through all of them today. But what I, I really want to talk about is some in interesting information. Now I'm gonna have to open up a Facebook window for this one. I got some interesting information from my dear friend Rosie Neal and her and I both incarnated from the 36th dimension basically from source uh, and uh, she's she and I have been going through this before time literally before archangels, before everything else. It's, it's pretty crazy, but um, she recently went to a doctor. So, and she, um, I don't, I'm just gonna read this because it's really important information. Um, so let's, let's go through it. She said, I had a test done that showed that the cell structure of the mitochondria is not working properly and has changed. This also includes the DNA and RNA have changed on a cellular level. This creates many underlying issues physically with the parasympathetic, parasymp parasympathetic uh, nervous system, vascular system, muscles, lymphatic systems, sympathetic nervous system, thyroid issues. With all forms of digestion issues, cell structures, and cell protoplasma properties, restoring energy levels, endocrine system, cardiovascular system, just to name a few things that that it affects. In layman terms, it means chronic fatigue with extreme weakness, organ weakness, along with muscular and joint pain. Now I know a lot of you have been going through these same kind of symptoms. I'm just taking a break from the article to chime in. I know for myself, I've been taking, normally I'll, I'll take one nap, but lately I've been taking two naps a day. It's really been draining me, um, these, these energies that are coming in. As a matter of fact, Tiffany Styles just posted an energy update. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yesterday, it's called Holy Shift <laughs> with the F in parentheses, but uh, it talks about these coronal mass ejections and uh, solar flares and all these things that are going on, geomagnetic storms that are going on that will be changing our DNA as well. So not only that, but a lot of people are experiencing these, these aches and pains that they've never had before. So I'll continue with the article right now. So Rosie goes on to say, so a couple days after understanding this, I did my prayers of gratitude with morning sunrise and I asked Source Spirit to bring me guidance as to what was happening. Now that the physical was documented, I needed documentation from Spirit as to if I was broken or was this evolutionary changes taking place. This is what I received. You are seeing evidence of physical changes on a cellular level. You are 
you are experiencing genetic mutation and alteration that has been taking place for many years in your level of awareness. It comes from the ultraviolet radiation and waveforms of photonic light from the sun. Allow it to be a understanding that you are changing from what you once were into your new future self. Everything is occurring in divine order. It is only your resistance that creates discomfort. You must get deep rest as your physical is under direct stressors. You will also be making more space on a physical level to capture and hold a higher content of wave form. Do not judge the next step of your journey as it may appear as illnesses, but know it is a stepping into another level of transformation. Because your mind cannot comprehend what is occurring with the physical, just allow and trust the process of evolution. What appears as that of non-beneficial form from your level of awareness is necessary for your greatest transformation. So that's really exciting, uh, what she mentioned there. Excuse me. It's hot in here and I didn't turn the AC down a little bit. So bear with me, I might be sweating a little. And just looking over at the comments, uh, Kevin DeVito, I've never taken naps here recently, but I've been getting very sleep sleepy during the day. And you're not alone, Kevin. Many of us, I mean, gosh, I have been taking naps and I've been getting good nights sleep for pretty much the last couple of weeks, uh, which is unusual for me because I don't usually sleep that long. Um, I'm, you know, usually I'm up until one or two o'clock and I sleep for maybe four or five hours and I wake up intermittently throughout the night usually around three o'clock or so but lately I've been sleeping seven or eight hours waking up then taking a couple naps afterwards so is anyone else going through that let me uh, know in the comments section I want to say hi to Christy Collins and uh, Joan oh boy I can't pronounce this one. Kai Kendall. Kai Kendall. Uh, Michelle Krabs. Susan Chantra Keshar. <laughs> well, I'm not good at pronouncing names, am I? Anyway, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me. So, a lot of us have been experiencing these drastically um, drastic changes in our sleeping patterns course myself included and I've been reading on Facebook uh, a number of people who have also been drained uh, and what's happening is while we're sleeping of course we're working on very many levels uh, of our uh, um, spiritual bodies you know you, you can do so many things um, when you're on the other side of the veil in your sleep but one of the things that's happening is your body's going through these changes and it needs that sleep to repair and upgrade the DNA. Now she made a comment, uh, she was being questioned basically, um, how do you know that this is a, a DNA upgrade? And her comment was really uh, spot on. She said, I was, I was tested by a medical doctor and have test results of structural changes in the mitochondria and significant changes in RNA and DNA which will impact 93 different aspects of one's anatomy. I know that my issues are directly related to cellular changes on a direct cellular level. My coming out publicly was to put forth that I have physical proof made by an MD doctor, physician, and by taking medical testing. I do understand your point of view and totally love Anthony Williams. Okay, this goes on to uh, what she was responding to. However, this medical proof is taking things to another level because it shows that we are physically changing not only on a physical level, but on a cellular level and on a molecular, molecular level. Spirit brought forth confirmation that I was not broken and that I am evolving on all levels. What we're seeing right now, the medical industry really doesn't understand what's happening to our DNA, and of course they want to put a label on everything. And of course, 
you know, the first thing that most people will think about if your DNA changes is GMOs and, uh, you know, the, the, the effects on, on your system by eating GMOs. But most of us that are watching this Facebook Live are pretty conscientious about what we eat. I know for myself, I rarely ever eat GMOs unless, for example, if you go out and have a slice of pizza, you, you know darn well that there's processed wheat that's in the pizza dough. There's probably GMO tomatoes in the uh, in the sauce and probably some kind of processed cheese that's put on top. So once in a while you may have some kind of uh, GMO food, but for the most part I think a lot of us are, are very conscientious about what we put into our, our body because it does affect the, the mind, soul, and spirit as well as the body. So it's really interesting what's going on right here. Uh, and I'm going to be peeking over here. I know what you guys are seeing on your end is a little different than what I'm seeing. What I have on the right hand side is a list of what's going on live. And I'll be checking out over there um, to see how you guys are doing as well. So Julie, Julie Ann Lindine says yes, snaps. And uh, I just want to say hi to David Boltrick, Stephen Blondo, yes to the naps, Nicole Marie, yup. Michelle Krebs, Lagerquist, hi friend, hi Michelle. <laughs> And Kendra Teigen saying, but I can't sleep, 3 a.m. I know. Uh, there's an article on N5D, as a matter of fact, uh, Michelle, that it's a common spiritual awakening symptom of waking up at 3 o'clock. And uh, when, I, when I go back, I'll, I'll put that link in right there. So, uh, and Bren Sage is saying, yeah, I've been napping the past few weeks. So a lot of us have been going through this. Connie Ledoux, Ledo. Hey, Greg. Hi, Connie. Uh, Nancy Graciola Vega is saying, feeling drained all the time. So this is going on through a, for a lot of us right now. And it's, it's, it's not uncommon. It seems like pre pretty much the majority of us are experiencing these kind of uh, draining uh, symptoms that are going on with these energies that are coming in. <laughs> and Sandra Blessing is saying, we aren't allowed to take naps at work. Well, that stinks. Uh, hi, Angelique Kruger. Uh, she has an awesome Facebook page. So, what I'd like to do, um, you know, and I'm, I'll, I'll be keeping track of everything that's going on here. Leticia Teresa says, "Thank you, Greg. Great seeing you as usual. I, I've been sleeping very well and waking up between three and five a.m. Even on non-work days, I'll be 65 this month." and pulled a 13-hour shift and felt fantastic. At the end, I was just expired, but not tired. The body has been going in and out of some pain in different parts of the body, and then suddenly, the next morning, poof, gone. Yes, DNA upgrade, evolving indeed. Glad to hear, thank you for sharing. So, I, I still have a bunch of questions that are going on, but this uh, DNA upgrade that's that's going on right now, it's evident, It's it's, and it's, it's coming in right now through so many different ways. Like I said, we're, we're having right now these um, solar flares, geomagnetic storms, all this energy is coming in, not just from the sun, but from the galactic central sun as well. So what it's doing is creating these changes on a molecular level, and our bodies are responding by sleeping. So if you're getting tired, always try to listen to your body. I know that there's people that are going through situations where you are at work and you feel really tired and you're not able to get that sleep while you're at work. But maybe, you know, even though when you get home it might be six or seven o'clock, don't feel bad if you want to take a nap for like an hour or two and then wake up, do whatever you need to do, go back to sleep. Always try to at least listen to your body, okay? So I'm looking at the comments. Selena says she wakes up every night at 3.30 a.m. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard this story that I've had. One time, my daughter and I, we had these friendship bracelets that we both put on. And they say that when the friendship bracelet finally falls off, whatever your wish or intention that you put into it comes true. So I had this green friendship bracelet that I put on and the night that it fell off, I woke up at exactly 1.11, went back to bed, woke up at 
went back to bed. And sure as hell, I woke up at 3.33. <laughs> the odds of that happening, happening are astronomical of waking up at 1.11, 2.22, and 3.33 the same night. So it was really fascinating. And honestly, I forgot what the intention that I put in was, but I'm sure it was something for the uh, collective. I usually don't make intentions for just me. <laughs> Michael Shea says he's been sleeping the last three winters, hibernating apparently. So I do have some questions I'd like to go through. Uh, here's a comment um, from PJ Puskak. She says, I never ever remember dreams. Why don't I remember my dreams? Totally blank, nothing at all. Well, you might want, there's certain herbs that will help you remember dreams. According to Sonia Choquette, she says that if you put some lemon in your water, place that on your nightstand, drink a little of that before you go to bed, and throughout the night when you wake up, uh, you, you will remember your dreams by doing that. You might also want to consider taking melatonin, either three milligrams or five milligrams. And I know when I take melatonin, my dreams get pretty wild. Um, I don't usually have to, but if I feel that I really need some sleep and I can't go to sleep, I will take a melatonin. You might want to try putting, taking a, a melatonin and washing it down with lemon water. <laughs> I've never tried that, but boy, I'd be curious what kind of dreams you, you'd, you'd get out of that. I just want to touch too on something. On the last N5D meetup, speaking of which, I have one tomorrow, um, which would be the 16th, July 16th. Um, so if anyone's in the Sarasota area, I invite that you, uh, I invite you all to join me um, on Siesta Key Beach on the 99% Quartz Crystal Sand. Um, and our meetup is always right behind the, the Green Lifeguard House. So if you're in the area, come on down, check us out. Now the last meetup I had, this is the power of manifestation and how we're always getting signs from universe. So here it is on a Sunday. And of course, you know, it's the Siesta Key is the number one beach in the United States, number five in the world. And of course the parking lot's packed. And I try to get there maybe half an hour, 45 minutes before the meetup, just so I can get everything set up. So I pull into the parking lot and I, right in the front row, I see this car with this, it has its right hand signal uh, blinker in the back blinking. So I figure, okay, he's, he wants to back out. So I stop and I turn on my signal to turn right to take his spot. In the meanwhile, this family walks up to their van right next to him, get in their car and take off immediately. So I figure, okay, well, I'll take that spot. So I, I turn into the spot and I look over at the car with the blinker on, there was nobody in it. <laughs> if you shut your car off, your blinkers shut off. There's no reason for that blinker to be blinking. But that was universe saying, turn here, turn here, turn here. <laughs> so I turned right there, you know, I, I was paying attention to the signs. We were always getting these signs every day on what we're supposed to be doing, where we're supposed to be heading. Uh, so just pay attention to those signs and uh, you'll get blessings like that. I'm going to take a peek at the comments. Here's a good one from Jenny regarding dreams. Set your intention to remember your dreams and keep a journal for the morning. And Melissa smells the flowers. Florida, yes, Siesta Key is in Florida. It's uh, right off of Sarasota on the Gulf Coast. So I'm going to move on right here. Uh, Linda McLean asks, I stopped remembering my dreams. How do we become multidimensional if we can't remember? Thanks. Well, what's happening is even though you can't remember your dreams, you're still working on the other side. Sometimes you're not allowed to remember your dreams. You might be doing something really, really important on the other side that you're not allowed to know right now. Be interesting to have like a hypnosis just to go back and see what you were dreaming about in your dreams 
but I think there's a reason why you're unable to remember specifically. But as people are mentioning, set your intention to remember. Ask your spirit guides and guardian angels to help you remember. Try melatonin. Try the lemon water uh, right next to your bed when you go to sleep and see if that works. And let me know. Uh, Linda McLean also has another question. Any comments about having being hit by lightning? I was when I was eight years old and still feel the effects. Have had electricity go through me three other times. I'm wondering how this is affecting the ascension process. I'm unable to find info on this. It's really interesting that you've been hit by lightning three times. So has Danian Brinkley. I don't, I don't know if you're famil familiar with uh, Danian. Linda, but he was also hit by lightning three times, and in his process of going through these uh, different strikes of lightning, he actually saw what was going to come. He actually has these these prophecies that he talks about about things that are going to happen in the future. In his case, he crossed over to the to the other side, and it's really fascinating. It seems like, you know, some people just have that kind of energy, that connection. You know, I'm guessing that you're the kind of person that if you walk under a street light, it just blows because of your energy. You might just have that when you walk into a room, your energy is so strong that it affects electrical currents. So I'm, I'm not really sure how to handle that. You know, if, if I'm you, um, what I would do and if the people that are in the uh, Facebook Live chat room, um, have some suggestions, throw them out there and I'll pass them on. Uh, but it does seem like you're, you're definitely a conduit for energy and there's probably a way of harnessing that and then externalizing that in a positive way. Okay? So if I were you, that's what I would be working on and trying to figure out how can I use this energy, all this energy, abundance of energy that I have by putting it out there and using it in some positive way through healing other people, whether it's physically or long distance healing. And you may already be doing that. Let me know. Once again, here's another name that I'm probably going to mess up, but it's called Lamo Yeo. <laughs> okay, and he is asking, does the walk-in soul walk out after a while? It does. And it has. Gosh, I couldn't tell you how many. I've had at least probably nine walk-ins. And I just recently had another one um, that I was explaining on the last N5D Facebook Live. My latest walk-in doesn't like to sleep with clothes on. Before I used to, I'd have like a sweatshirt on, and sweatpants. This one, eh, I know, probably too much information, but... This one doesn't like clothes at night when he's sleeping. <laughs> and you'll find that there are uh, little idiosyncrasies that go on when you have a walk-in, a new walk-in. Something small will change um, in your life, something that you never did before. Okay, or, or, But generally, you're, you're still you. All your memories are the same. You still remember everything. My, my daughter and her mom, my ex-wife, um, know specifically when a walk-in entered me as well. So um, your friends will be the first to know. Sometimes you'll be the last to know when these walk-ins enter and when they leave as well. Yes, Crystal Ann, you caught me live. Welcome. Hello, Janice Fowler um, and everyone that's, that's joining me um, on this Facebook Live. I'm so grateful that you're all here. I love you all so much. Amber Simpson is asking, can you describe advanced enough for meditating in a mirror? Okay, in the last Facebook Live, I was talking about a third eye mirror meditation, and I highly recommend only those who are advanced meditators do that, because you're going to see stuff when you're meditating in the mirror that a lot of people aren't ready for, okay? So what you do is you shut off all the lights, okay? 
you place a candle in front of you, the candle slit, and the mirror's in front of the candle. And what you do is you focus on your third eye and you just let, get, let your eyes get into this relaxed state. It's almost like if you're seeing one of those 3D things uh, where you relax your eyes and then all of a sudden there's a, a, a picture inside the picture, the magic eye, the 3D magic eye kind of thing. Kind of relax your eyes like that and uh, focus on the third eye and what you're going to see is your face is going to transform into all these different aspects of yourself. And it's really fascinating. It can be pretty intimidating too if you're not uh, advanced, I would say, as a meditator uh, because you may see things that would scare some people. Now, and here's my example. I've seen myself transform into different aspects of myself, maybe past lives and whatever. Then all of a sudden I saw this it was a monster-like ogre. I, I can't really explain exactly. It had red fiery eyes and fangs like that and a huge head. And it was staring back at me. And I calmly said, please leave, you are not welcome here. Only those of the highest vibration of truth, love and light are welcome here. And he left. I think most people would freak out if they had seen what I saw. But if you stand in your power and you know that whatever you're looking at cannot hurt you, there's nothing to, to fear. I've faced every fear I have to face, so there's, there's nothing left except love. So if you think you're ready for that, do it. But, and I'm, I'm not trying to put fear into you either, but I'm just saying be careful what you wish for, basically, because you might see some things that can be intimidating, but they can't hurt you, okay? And always remember to protect yourself with light, white light beforehand, okay? And I have an article on N5D, what to do before you meditate, so you might want to check that out. Melissa Smells the Flowers is saying, I agree with the electricity. I've turned on electric pianos caused lights to flash and blocked the internet. I ground a lot and I do lots of long distance healing with the extra energy because I will start feeling shaking if I don't listen to my body. <coughs> and I've been a huge advocate of always listening to your body. And here's a great example. And by the way, thank you, Melissa, for your comment. A lot of people, what they're pushing, Big Pharma is pushing, is something like Prilosec or Tums or all this crap. And you know, if you take this uh, Prilosec, you know, you're you're able to eat anything you want for the next you know two three days or whatever. But what your body's telling you is, I'm very short on alkaline and I'm way too acidic right now. Um, so what your body is actually saying is have a stick of celery, have a couple sticks of celery to neutralize that acid that's in your body. It's really unfortunate that a lot of people will opt out for Prilosec or Tums or some kind of antacid instead of listening to their body because your body's always right. It's always telling you what you should do. So be cognizant of the messages that your body's sending you and listen. Okay. <laughs> Jacqueline Martins Osorio said, I would definitely freak the hell out. <laughs> well, a lot of people would if they saw that kind of being in front of them. You know, what I do is I ask my guides and angels, show me something that will ma make my jaw drop in a really good way. I don't want to see a bunch of crap. It's like when I do my walk of gratitude. I ask for an abundance in everything that's good in life because if you just ask for abundance, you could have a, an abundance of crap, <laughs> okay? You don't want that. So be specific whatever you put out there in your thoughts and intentions to the universe. I, I would like abundance in, in everything that's good in life. So I think that includes not seeing these kind of entities coming in. But you know what? In retrospect, what I should have done 
was helped that entity, even if that entity was an aspect of myself. Um, so you might even look at it, those who are advanced with this third eye mirror meditation, um, as an opportunity maybe to heal yourself. David North says, when I meditate, I go into a trance. Is that normal? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. I'm glad you do. I think it's awesome that you do. Um, what you try to do is just free the mind um, and get rid of all that clutter that's going on. Um, I know that for the longest time, since I was a child, on the back of every report card in grade school, it says, fails to pay attention because I'd be daydreaming. I'd be looking out the window. I was bored with school and uh, right through high school I was just so distracted by the crap we had to learn and honestly when I graduated high school I was right close to the bottom of my graduating class. Um, and then I went to college I barely got into college. My parents chose my curriculum, business administration, which was boring as hell. And uh, so I joined a fraternity, partied my ass off, and flunked out three times. <laughs> uh, shout out to all my Alpha Theta Gamma brothers. <laughs> but, you know, I ended up uh, in my 20s, I basically played in several hard rock bands. I played lead and rhythm guitar, I sang a few songs, and, uh, and then in my 30s I got married, had my daughter, and my life changed. But after my daughter was born I decided that I wanted to go back to college so I could pro provide for her the best that I could. And by then I kinda knew what my direction would be because I was always fascinated with the mind. Why do we do what we do? So I chose psychology as my major and as an adult learner and putting myself through college um, I ended up graduating with honors for both my BA and my masters. Now it makes a huge difference when you're going to college for something that you love doing versus going through grade school, middle school and high school learning crap, basically state sponsored propaganda that's not going to help anyone. But if there are any kids that are listening, you know, and you do want to follow that educational path of doing something like that, I'm not going to say what you should or shouldn't do, but if it were my child, I would recommend, you know, that you just get through with what you can get through. And if you decide that college is right for you and there's something that you really, really like to do, play the game. And once you're in college, it's a whole new ball game because you will pick and choose your classes and if it's something that you really enjoy you'll kick ass doing it and you'll find it fascinating. I know when I was in college I would ask the other students who's the hardest psychology who's the hardest psychology professors on campus and pretty much unanimously they would say Dr. Rainville so I took every class I could with him because I knew that it would help me uh, be the best that I could be in the field of psychology and I kicked ass in all of his classes as well. Okay, so moving on. Can you talk about, this is from Adriana Roman, can you talk about cutting karmic and energetic cords? Of course I can. Um, what happens is we do have karma that's accrued throughout the years, not just our current life, but there's also past life karma that, that's going on. Um, and it's so simple to do. And all you have to do, a lot of people overthink this, really. All you have to do is forgive yourself and others. And you can make a general blank statement and put it out there. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to do it numerous times, just once. Forgive yourself and others. Um, you can also, there, there are also, I think there's something on N5D that specifically lays out exactly what you might want to say in those situations, but don't overthink it. It's not that difficult. Um, 
um, to, to just make those, those cuts. Uh, the biggest step you're going to make is in forgiveness. And as I mentioned, you only have to, have to do it one time, and that's according to Dolores Cannon as well. Don't feel guilt. Any, any time you feel guilt after that one time you forgive, that's all you because it's all over with. Let it go. It's done. It's over with. Okay? Ali Hassan is asking, is it true that one can receive more cosmic energy downloads slash waves like they did the very first time without knowing? Any suggestions? Definitely. There's a lot of people out there that are really good people. And even if they're religious, even if they don't have necessarily views that you agree with or whatever, a lot of people are talking about the, the 51%. All you have to do is be 51% positive in order to make the transformation. And that's not that difficult. I think most of the people that are tuning in are at least 80 to 90% positive. And that's why we all love each other so much. But yeah, I think that, you know, these people, there are a lot of people who will say are deeply religious that are just really good people, you know, and they were kind of tricked by religion into, you know, being subservient, controlled and conformed, but they're just good people. And I don't think that that will come into play when um, it comes time for the transformation to occur and through the event. So yeah, I just just be good. And like I said, you know, all religious texts should be just four words long. Love everyone, respect everything. And I keep getting these messages over and over and over again to maintain a high vibration, to stay grounded, to love, forgive, and express gratitude. I can't express over express that enough. These are so important right now. Especially the grounding, because we're seeing so many people in this genre that other people are looking up to that are losing it spiritually. And uh, immediately I'm saying, yep, I guarantee that person's not grounding themselves. Uh, another picture I took before I uh, posted my picture of me and Buddha on my Facebook page was at the beach. And in capital letters, it just says grounding. You can't ground too much. And uh, when you make that connection, it really does take away a lot of stressors and gives you that connection with yourself and Mother Earth. You're just uniting as one and you can feel that connection instantly. Uh, so get out there and ground as much as you can and do the other things as well. You know, love, forgive, express grat gratitude. It'll make a huge difference in everyone's life. Okay, um, welcome, Bridget. And Nicole Marie says, Ho'oponopono prayer works. And that's what I do with my uh, walk of gratitude. And I've been including this basically in just about every Facebook Live. And I highly encourage that you do something similar. It doesn't have to be exactly what I do. I actually encourage people to tailor their own walk of gratitude to whatever it sounds good for them but this is what I do for my walk of gratitude dear creator source universe speak spirit guides and guardian angels friends and family on both sides of the veil galactic neighbors and friends higher self and mother earth I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should please forgive me thank you for your unconditional love safety support protection and abundance and everything that's good in life as I promise to listen with open eyes ears mind and heart I ask that you help me turn on all the codons in my DNA as well as activate all current and future strands of DNA and more than anything I love you all so very much so where I say I call them my posse Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels. Feel free to change that around if you feel comfortable with saying God and throwing Jesus in there and Archangels or whatever you want. This is what I do. And I highly recommend whatever feels good to you 
do it and just express that gratitude. It's huge. And it ha you have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. When you put that gratitude out there, the universe returns it 10 times, at least 10 times back. Okay, so Anna King has a question in chat. How do you handle all the crazy normal people around you who aren't handling the energy well? I feel like I'm just trying to be patient with them and send them love energy. That's perfect. That's all you can do. There's people outside my uh, house shooting off fireworks, so if you hear noise, it's not gunshots, okay? <laughs> but that's, that's perfect, Anna, exactly what you're doing. I've always believed that, you know, you can't enlighten anyone. You can light the candle and hope they maintain the flame. But in your situation and in, in many of our situations, it's probably best to lead by example and to be there for them. You know, when these events take place that they're having a hard time coping with because you'll be the one and many of you that are listening right now are going to be the ones that help people through these changing times okay we are the pioneers here you know when when people look back in history they're gonna see all of us as the mothers and fathers of the new world okay so just be strong Daniil Chi uh, hi Greg love you you're beautiful thank you <laughs> Ali Hassan that's right thank you so I'm just so, once again, so grateful and uh, that everyone's joined me, especially on short notice. I only gave like 10 minutes. I wish I gave a little bit more time, but this was very spontaneous based on the information that I got from Rosie Neal that I'm feeling as well, too. And a lot of us are feeling this about the DNA changes that are going on. Okay. Gigi Turner is asking, what about in your dream? I can, I have a feeling very clear when I was in a UFO. Okay, now, this was in a previous episode of N5D where I dreamt that I was aboard a ship. And I've had this dream numerous times. One time, it was really cool. So there was about 12 of us standing in a circle. And through telepathy, we were manifesting this holographic image that was in the middle of the circle. I wish I could remember exactly what it was that we were manifesting. But it was so cool because one person would have this idea and everybody telepathically would say, oh my God, that's the best thing ever. And then somebody else would say, but wait, what if we did this? And the hologram grew again and we're like, oh my God, it got even better. This is amazing. But wait, what if we added that? <laughs> and we just kept doing that and interacting with each other and building whatever it was that we were building. Who knows, it could have been a universe or something, but um, it's really fascinating to have that uh, collective group consciousness working together telepathically and to build things that were just amazing. So I think that's where we're heading. Edith says she's getting a low hum in the audio. Is there something different in the environment? No, the only computer that I can use for Facebook Live is an older computer, and it's the fan, so I apologize for that. Um, that's why I have this Yeti microphone. Hopefully it's helping the sound a little, but I'm sorry. It's the best I can do, okay? Mary Weiner is saying something is happening to me. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> Don't leave us hanging. That's true, Michael Shea. A hypnosis would help me remember it. I would love to go back and find out exactly what it was that we were manifesting. Now this isn't the only time I've been on a ship and I guarantee many of you that are are listening right now or listening to the recorded version that I'll be posting on YouTube 
have had uh, dreams about being on a ship. Okay, moving on. Arunima Vijay is asking, what do you have to say to people who feel completely lost in their path? It depends on whether they're open to listening or not. If they're not opening to listening, there's nothing you can say or do. But if they're opening, if they're open to listening to you, I highly recommend that everything telling them that everything that comes into your life is a sign and is constantly leading you to exactly where you need to be and, and that can be through things that are are not so pleasant either um, sometimes you might take a wrong path but that path is going to help guide you back onto the right path okay so just pay attention to these little things that are going on in your life and here's a great example my mother is a type A controlling personality and all the women in my life up to a certain point were type A uh, personalities and what universe was trying to tell me was to confront my mother about it and eventually I finally did in my 40s and I have two older sisters one has since passed um, but they never confronted my mother I finally did and told her hey knock it off no more agendas and uh, we're just when we're all together we're just gonna kinda wing it when we're together and appreciate each other's company and she backed right down and uh, I learned in my life that that was what was happening I and to this day now I will not be with another controlling woman a type A controlling uh, person because that's not that's not me and, I'm not the kind of person that will be controlling others. I won't say to someone, you need to do this. You have to do that. That's not me. I, controlling other people it means that there's something within your own life that's out of control. And you're uh, reflecting that insecurity on other people. Okay, moving on. Uh, Aldous Becker, does black tourmaline have similar qualities as obsidian? Yes, definitely. Uh, those dark colored rocks are wonderful for grounding. So, you know, if you're having a, a rough day and you're not able to get out in nature, grab some, you know, a dark stone, you know, tourmaline, obsidian, hold on to it. And you're, you know, it, the, the stone comes from Mother Earth. So you're grounding just like that without having to go out especially if it's your it's a cold day and it's snowing outside or something like that you can ground inside with a, a dark colored stone like that so yes definitely okay So Tommy Scott is asking me to talk about alternate timelines. I am accessing multiple versions of myself. That is so freaking cool, Tommy. Um, if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on the recorded version, I would love for you to share what you're experiencing with us because I think a lot of us are going through that. Um, what's happening is every decision you make creates an alternate timeline. If you decide to wear yellow socks or white socks or no socks, any shoe that you decide to wear, every bit of clothing that you have, in an alternate reality you're wearing one combination or the other of something else. You know, Any decision you make creates an alternate reality. So um, what we're seeing right now is that these timelines are condensing and that's creating what's known as the Mandela effect. So what we're, we're, we're witnessing are these timelines that are collapsing down and things that we've known for a long time as the truth are all of a sudden changed. I think I used this in the last, the last time I was talking about the Mandela effect. There's a song, some of you older people will know it. I'm, I turned 57 in October, I'm old. But there's a song called California Dreamin' by the Mamas and Papas. 
And the lyrics go, uh, Walked into a church, I passed along the way. Well, I dropped down on my knees, and I, to pray. Everyone remembers that song as I began to pray. And apparently, the lyrics have changed. Um, and I don't know if you guys have heard about this one or not. Oh, there's Rosie here. Um, I'm sorry, let me just go, and she goes, good for you, Greg, you are an amazing person. I completely agree with you on the controlling aspect. I think a perfect thing for you is a partnership for you each. Raise one another up to experience your highest potential. Thank you, Rosie. That's my soul sister from the 36th dimension. <laughs> so anyway, that California Dreamin' song, a lot of people remember it as, I dropped down on my knees and I began to pray. Well, apparently that changed. And now it's, I pretend to pray. And you can even watch the original version that was apparently recorded in the 1960s, whenever it came out, of the Mamas and Papas. And you can see them saying, pretend, instead of began. Uh, there's so many different experiences of uh, the Mandela effect. There's probably several dozen, if not more, of things that we've known as fact. Another great example is there was that HBO program called Sex in the City, but now it's Sex and the City. I don't remember the and, I remember the in, but not the and. And uh, I'm certainly not alone in that. So these Mandela effect, these timelines are converging into humanity's greatest and highest good. So just be comfortable. Take those changes that are happening, roll with them, and realize that this is all working out in humanity's best interest. Okay. Gigi Turner is saying that I'm trapped in a toxic relationship. I don't know what to do. It's a tough one. Because what you want to do is be there and help that person and also realize that the toxic relationship may be reflecting back some things that you might need to see in yourself as well. Um, definitely you want to be there to help that person. But if that person, if there's not that energy exchange going on if there, or if there's an energy imbalance. I feel for you because we've all been in that kind of situation where you're putting so much in and you're not getting anything back. And even though, you know, it should never be about yourself. When you give, you give because you give from the heart. If there's an inequity of energy exchange, then that imbalance is going to create dissension. So it's, it's tough. I can see obviously one of two things happening. You stay in that relationship, try to make it work, and hope that the other person comes around or you make a break from it. Um, and it's, each case is gonna be different. Uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to go through and I think it's very subjective based on one person to another. But try to, be, try to take the high road in every situation, no matter what you're going through and at least you know that you did the right thing throughout that relationship when you do take the high road. Uh, don't get into that caddy kind of thing. You did this, so I'm gonna do that, or point the finger at anyone for anything. Just send love and forgiveness first and foremost to that person and see where that uh, lands you in your relationship and uh, take it from there. But I think forgiveness, not only to the other person, but to yourself as well. I know sometimes you, you, a, a bridge gets burned and it's hard to cross that bridge again. But it depends on the situation that you're going through. So um, love and forgiveness first. Take the high road second. And uh, I, I wish you the best, of however it turns out. Know that you are loved um, by many, just no matter what, what decision you make.
Okay, Arunima Vijay is saying, I feel like I am seeing and experiencing new things. It's scary. What's the best way to deal with this? Well, if it's scary, I think there's some kind of fear that's going on within you that you need to address. Because what happens is once you address that fear, I don't think these new things are going to be scary anymore. Also, what I mentioned in my walk of gratitude is that I ask for an abundance of everything that's good in life. So you may want to put that out there. Things, If you want to get these new things coming to you, ask for the things that are good, that will be beneficial for your spiritual growth. Because sometimes, like I said, if you put abundance out there and just ask for abundance, you might get an abundance of crap. So put that out there and see what happens. Ryan Hill's asking, how has Sarasota impacted your spirituality and ascension? What drew you there? Um, well, I absolutely love Sarasota, Siesta Key. Um, I was living in Apollo Beach, which is about 45 minutes north of Sarasota, and I went down to visit my parents in Fort Myers, which is about an hour south of Sarasota. And uh, on the way back, I was just about out of gas, so I saw the sign for Siesta Key, and I figured, you know, what the heck, I've been here in Florida for like nine years. I've never been to si uh, Siesta Key, even though I knew it was the number one beach. I always thought, uh, you know, beach is a beach. What's going to make it that much better than any other beach? I was wrong. <laughs> so I go in, I get my gas, I drive down to the beach, and as soon as I pull in, best parking spot is waiting for me as it always is and I get out and I step onto the beach and as soon as I stepped foot on that sand I knew I had to live there the sand on Siesta Key Beach is 99.9% .9 quartz crystal and anyone that's been here knows that it has this amazing amazing energy and tomorrow after the uh, N5D beach meetup there's a drum circle that goes on so when you combine the energy of the 99% quartz crystal sand with the energy of the drums, it just makes for an amazing experience. So yeah, that, that's what drew me there. Um, as it turns out though, I was reading an article and I'll post that in the comment section after I upload this video. But it's about how C uh, C Sarasota and Siesta Key is one of the 22 cities of light in the in the world and the numerology is really fascinating of Siesta Key and Florida well Florida the numerology of Florida is 11 if you add up all the letters like A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, so on and so forth and then do the numerology it all breaks down to 11 Sarasota the numerology is 22 and of course, now you probably already know, the numerology of Siesta Key is 33. So we are one of the 33 cities of light. As a matter of fact, I had a third eye vision. There's a reason why apparently I go to the Green Lifeguard House when I'm there. And I had this third eye vision of this huge mothership going over the Green Life Lifeguard House. So yeah, there's a magic here that anyone that has been here can attest so that's why I'm here and I absolutely love it but also know that wherever you are listening right now you're exactly where you need to be and thank you for being where you are uh, because everyone is anchoring the grid and we're all doing our work throughout the world and it's so important that you are exactly where you are right now thank you for being there and for anchoring that energy okay I, I mean that. I'm totally coming from my heart. I love you all so very much. Gosh, I'm missing all these comments too. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to go back and do another Facebook Live with all the questions that I've missed. So. Christine Bradley is asking Is everyone a starseed or a potential starseed? No. Not everyone is. Some people came directly from source. Some people, um, their their lineage are is the first time here. 
<laughs> Many of us are old souls, but not not everyone's a star seed. Um, though many of us have had numerous lives on various star systems. And uh, here's here's one that's really interesting. My my everyone in my family <clears throat> has red hair except me. And when I was a kid, my sisters used to tease me that I was adopted because I didn't have red hair. I had blonde hair until I was seven or so and then it turned brown and now that I'm older it went back to blonde but they used to tease me and I would cry myself to sleep at night thinking I was adopted not that it mattered honestly looking back in retrospect who cares as long as your parents love you but it was really cruel of my sisters to tease me and I know that they were just joking around and, and it was kind of funny in retrospect as well but as it turns out I've learned that the most uncommon hair and eye color is red hair with blue eyes, which my father has. And the red hair is also common from the star system Lyra. So I know that the universe was easily telling me that your genetic line definitely goes back to Lyra and obviously much further as well. I, I know that many of us have lived on various star systems, including you know, the birthplace of humanity Lyra, or it could be the Pleiades or Arcturus or whatever, whatever you uh, align to. But um, there are a number of us too that have came here before time existed. My friend Rosie, that's in the chat right now, is one of them. So I'm just looking at, uh, I have one more question here. It's from Caesar Leiter, L-A-I-T-E-R. How do we get to the number of 144,000 awakening? Is it real? You know, my gut's telling me that that 144,000, there is truth behind it, but not necessarily what the Bible's selling us, because that's what we've learned. A lot of what's in the Bible is used to control us. So there is probably some kind of truth. And it probably has a lot to do with the critical mass of what's needed in order to create the shift. And uh, I, I don't put a lot of uh, weight into that number myself, but I, I do think that there is a truth behind it. I just haven't figured out specifically what it is. And to me, it really doesn't matter um, what that is, as long as we're all working together, it'll happen when it happens. Um, you guys have probably seen the videos I put out about the three tidal waves that are coming and this white light that will engulf the earth that will change, change humanity in the blink of an eye. So, And of course, that the blink of an eye is another biblical kind of reference, but I think that's where the truth comes in, where truth is mixed in with you know these tenets of subservience, control, and conformity, in the blink of an eye, the transformation will happen. I've seen it. I've been there. I felt it. So I can tell you that much as my own truth. And uh, what I've put out there, numerous other people have seen and felt exactly the same thing. So I know I'm not alone in that as well. So just to wrap it up here, um, I brought you all aboard here to talk about Rosie's amazing uh, article that she wrote and I published today on N5D. There are some huge changes that are happening. Um, many of you are feeling tired and achy. I've had some chest pain. It was It's not in the heart, but it's like right above the heart up here. I also have the, uh, like a pain in my back, which could, on the left-hand side, which might be a past life, being stabbed in the back by someone, um, kind of thing that's going up. Uh, there are several articles on N5D where you can uh, check out what these metaphysical pains and meanings are um, and know that as what we've learned for those who have taken QHHT, anything that happens on your left hand side of the body is a past life issue. Anything that happens on the right hand side is a current life issue. So um, you might want to look into that. Uh, know that your body's constantly communicating with you and telling you when it's time to take a nap, 
and get that DNA upgrade. So listen, don't be afraid to take a nap whenever it is that you're able to take that nap um, and, and, and get that upgrade. Uh, allow your body to absorb all these energies that are going on and uh, we're going to make this transformation happen hopefully sooner than later. Okay. So once again, I just want to thank everyone for joining me on this N5D Facebook Live. I love you so all so very much and I feel very blessed and grateful that you were able to join me in an impromptu N5D Facebook Live. Uh, so that'll, that'll do it for me. Namaste everyone. I love you. Much gratitude and love.